What's going on everybody? Good morning, good evening, or wherever you are, and whatever time it is, and welcome back to yet another video with you, man. A measure holic and ladies and gentlemen, it's finally here! The next divided to para patch, the 1.3.2 update, is finally upon us. That's right, the beta for the patch will be releasing very, very, very soon. I can't give you a specific date on when you will actually be able to get public access to the patch. However, I can say it is coming extremely soon. So wherever you get your Divided to Para news, make sure you're paying attention because you will be able to get access to the beta very soon. Before we do go over this list though, please do keep in mind that this is a early access beta build. That means that there may be some major changes that happen to the beta throughout development. This is not a set in stone change. Please be aware of that you're looking at essentially early access footage. I also want to give a massive shout out to the DEI team for giving uh, myself early access to the beta. I sincerely appreciate it everybody. Thank you so much. Now we have some massive changes, some of the biggest content additions too that I've seen in Divided to Power in a very long time. This is an exciting patch. And if ever there was a patch to get you back into playing Divided to Power on Total War Room 2, this is it. So for this video everybody, we're going to go over the uh, broad list of changes that are coming up in this update. I'm not going to list every single specific little tiny detail because there's hundreds of changes that are going to be coming in in the form of miscellaneous changes and bug fixes among just a whole slew of things that you might want to discover on your own. So today we're going to talk about all of the major changes coming in the 1.3.2 update and then you can expect more content on this update coming out in the coming days and weeks. Uh, so I'll talk more about that though as we get into the video. So without any further ado, let's jump into it. Timestamps down below. So to those of you who are in the DEI community, you should know full well that the next update that we are receiving for Divided to Power is releasing with a brand new campaign. That's right, finally. We haven't had another campaign added since the Alexander the Great uh, campaign DLC was kind of added in by the DEI team. Now we have another campaign. This is the Mithridatic Wars campaign. That's right, this is going to be covering the latter, the latter half of the Mithridatic Wars. The campaign begins in 83 BC, just as Sulla has achieved peace after defeating Mithridates VI, and he has returned to Italy with his army to confront the son of Marius, that's right, the Marius, the Marius who instituted the Marian reforms, Marius the Younger, who was aligned with the Popularis party. Sulla, of course, leading the Optimates party. So now we have a massive civil war going on between Marius the Younger and Sulla. The stage is set for this civil war to occur as the east is held by Sulla and the west is held by Marius. Currently, you can only choose one out of three factions to play. Under the Roman category, you have, of course, Marius the Younger, like I said, leader of the uh, Populares. We have Sulla, leader of the Optimates faction. And then we have Mithridates VI himself, leading Pontus, so you can actually play Pontus, come on in as a bit of a third wheel to the party, knock out Rome, and do what Mithridates couldn't, which is defeat Rome. Hopefully we will get more factions added to the campaign to play in the future. I have no idea if that's going to be a thing. I sincerely hope we do get some more, because the entire map has been reworked to be historical at this time, so I really hope that we can see even more development coming into this campaign, but as it is, you can easily sink hundreds of hours of gameplay into this campaign alone. I've tested out this campaign myself, I'm loving it so far, and I absolutely can't wait to start a Let's Play on the channel, which will be happening very soon, by the way, uh, to show it all off to you and enjoy it. It is glorious, and I'm so grateful to the DEI team for going ahead and uh, giving us this campaign, but this is absolutely monumental, it's big. This is going to be a campaign that you cannot ignore if you love Roman history, which of course you do. You're watching this video and you play Total War Rome too, right? Anyway, now let's go on to the next major thing coming up in this update. So ladies and gentlemen, we have more overhauls coming. Overhauls, overhauls, overhauls. You get an overhaul and you get an overhaul, that's right. We have the Nomadic Factions overhaul happening in this update. That's right, all three of the playable uh, Nomadic Factions, the Roxolani, uh, the Saka, and the Royal Scythians, 
they are all going to be completely redone from the ground up in terms of their roster and uh, many aspects of their campaign as well. Uh, again, I won't cover every single little piece of content being adjusted in this video, but please do keep an eye out for a faction overview video, which I'll be releasing very, very soon, covering these changes for each specific faction individually. Uh, however, at the time of this beta being released, we only have the Roxalani being added in. Now, the other two factions will be overhauled. They just aren't necessarily quite ready yet, and they'll be coming in future patches in the beta patch. So it is coming for the 1.3.2 update. It's just that not every single thing in the update is in the beta patch that's being released. So please do keep that in mind. Right now, we just have the Roxalani. They are coming out with a very delicious looking roster. I absolutely love how immersive and enjoyable and how much more practical it is now too to play as a Roxalani. Before, I would never have considered playing as a Nomance. As nice as the units looked, uh, thanks to the DEI team's efforts, the roster was just far too limited for me personally. However, now, after seeing the massive changes that have happened to the Roxalani, I'm seriously considering doing some serious playthroughs with them. They are probably one of the most underloved categories of factions in DEI and Total War Rome 2 in general. Now they are getting some serious love to add more immersion and to just make it more enjoyable for you as a player. So I highly recommend you go ahead and check out these faction changes when they are made available to you. Uh, if you're still not completely sold on it, hang tight, make sure you subscribe to my channel because I will be 100% covering uh, all three factions in faction overviews over the coming weeks. They will be coming out very, very soon, so keep an eye out for that. For instance, they now have a core of solid spear-wielding troops. This is also complemented by a small selection of swordsmen followed by a very large variety of archers of all things. It's very interesting and adds some nice little bit of progression as well through your units as you uh, progress through the errors. You also have Fantastic Cav, of course. Your Nomad to your cavalry is going to be excellent. You have uh, Fantastic Horse Archers and you have incredible Shock Cavalry. Shock Cav rivaling Parthia. Uh, and that's just for the Roxolani, so I can't wait to see how the other factions are looking. I don't have access to that just yet, uh, but I do know that the Roxolani roster is delicious and it's going to be a lot of fun so keep that in mind never been a better time to try out the nomads so those are some of the biggest and most obvious changes coming in this update there is a whole host of other big changes that are coming and probably the next set of biggest changes will be the battle changes that's right we're getting some major changes in how cavalry interacts with infantry for example the mass that is the weight uh, an overall mass of cavalry and infantry has been altered so that spearmen can now withstand charges easier as they are trained to do so, right? It makes sense. Spearmen shouldn't necessarily be able to be knocked over and knocked out easily by cavalry. They weren't necessarily easily knocked over before, but it wasn't necessarily as strong as it should have been. So that has been adjusted. But to complement this, a fix has been added to a weird issue where cavalry would actually take more casualties when they recharged infantry. It wasn't intended, but it's something that's been in the game for a while now. However, the DEI team has come in and managed to reverse this change so that actually recharging infantry is going to be a lot more efficient. So while spearmen are stronger against cav, your cav will now be able to do more, ja more damage when they get a nice delicious recharge in. In addition to these battle changes, we have the Repel Cavalry Formation being redone. So that now units that get to actually use that uh, buff, which aren't all spear units, there is sword units that get to use it, they will have a much better chance and better bonus against cavalry. However, for the duration of them using this buff, they're actually going to be a lot worse against infantry. So you're going to have to be a lot more on your game when it comes to using this repel, uh, repel cavalry formation. Make sure that you're not just spamming it because you might end up losing some infantry fights that you're not expecting to. So that could catch you off guard if you aren't careful. You need to be a smart commander now to use these powerful buffs. So now we're going to cover a whole host of different changes under what I'm just dubbing as major changes being done to the campaign. Um, there is a whole lot more to this, so please uh, don't take me wrong, there's a lot more going on, but listing every single little change just is not feasible to you all. So what I'm going to do is go over some of the highlights of the major changes and miscellaneous changes coming up, uh, and then we'll get to the end of the video. But anyway, I wanted to let you all know that the traditions and ancillary traits uh, 
are being overhauled. Um, you will note that some of the traits have been overhauled in the past. Now there's going to be even more done to them to try and make them feel a little bit more unique. Right now, armies, while they do have a good variety of uh, traditions that they can take up, it is still a little bit linear in that there are some buffs that you definitely want your army to take. However, the DEI team is trying to diversify this a little bit to make sure that you go down some different routes based on your culture and your army and your needs. So it's going to be more immersive while also creating armies to be more unique as they should be, right? In addition, we also have a whole slew of visual and statistic changes done to units. Um, for example, one of the in my opinion, best new visual changes is a new arrow model. Before, arrows were pretty just dark and small and skinny. They weren't very easy to see, especially if you had the tra uh, trails turned off. Uh, the arrow trail, that's the long arrows when they shot you up in the air. Now, arrows have been completely redone. Um, big shout out to Summary for that. Good on you, mate. Um, they, they stand out a lot more right now, but not in an unimmersive way, in my opinion. They look fantastic. It looks brutal when they're landing and while they're flying up in the air. It's just so much better, and it's just the way it should have been. So, mad props to him for that. Uh, we also see a whole slew of units having their visuals redone, uh, in addition to some minor rebalancing. Again, not going to list all of the changes, but I will list a bunch of units that have been altered. For example, we have shared Hellenic Florex spear and sword units have been redone visually. We also have Syrian elephants getting visual changes. We have Seleucid Hypaspistae, early Hetairoi and Thessalian Florex cavalry. We have Carthaginian mercenary units being redone visually and they've had a bunch of statistic uh, rebalances. Garrison armies of barbarian factions have been redone to be more unique as well. Uh, we also see Iberian and Celtic units getting a whole slew of stat changes. Um, and then we have a massive amount of unit cards being uh, redone. Mad props again to summary for that. Uh, you will notice this especially when you're playing as Sparta. Sparta has had some big unit cards redone. They look so much better. I don't know how they managed to get them to look better, but they look better. Um, I really can't wait for you all to jump in game and have fun playing as Sparta again as well. Because the Sparta campaign never gets old. Hashtag Sparta never dies. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen... Uh, that's where I'm going to leave it there. We've covered a, a lot of the big changes coming in. There's a whole slew of other miscellaneous changes that the DEI team has put in. So much effort for a lot of bug fixing as well. So um, really, when the patch is released, please do keep an eye out for the patch notes. Read them yourself if you really want to know all of the little changes. Otherwise, keep an eye out on your Divided to Para news outlets, whether it's my channel, my Discord, the DEI official YouTube, or their Discord. Whatever, whoever you follow that helps you get DEI news, make sure that you pay attention because in the coming days, we're going to be seeing the 1.3.2 patch released. I can't give you a specific day just yet, but no, it is just around the corner and it's going to be a big patch. This is going to bring you back into the game yet again. What a beautiful start for 2023. There has never been a better time to get into Divide 18 Para. Anyway, everybody, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed and I shall see you in the next one.